Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel. This is actually a special edition of the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel, and I welcome you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here. Thank you for checking out this channel. Thank you for your continued support. And thank you for your, your just being you. Thank you. Um, if you're new to this channel, we, here we talk mostly about uh, mindfulness practices, uh, philosophies, and sort of um, understandings. And we mostly relate that to, you know, my, my area of expertise is in stress, right? And, and uh, you know, even though most people don't see the connection, stress is really at the root of almost all of our suffering <laughs> in modern society. And so, so I talk about a lot of this stuff here, and I try to offer, you know, again, not only just information, but practice practices and practical uh, information that you can use to help yourself to reduce stress and to show up in the moment as you, right? Not as the version of you that's stressed, right? But Because that's what happens with us. The story changes, the emotions change, and the physical sensation changes in the, the presence of stress. <clears throat> and that changes how we show up. It changes how we show up to our families, to our loved ones, to our jobs, to our hobbies, to our passions, all of it. So that's what we do here. If you're if you're new, I ask you to just take a moment now, and if you could, this is my YouTube spiel. If you're watching on YouTube, please, please just take a moment and like it. Smash that like button, as they say. Um, and if you could, subscribe to the channel, even if you don't watch the ch the, the videos every day. That's cool. Um, but, but subscribing definitely helps the algorithm, right? And so does sharing it, okay? So every time you hit that little share button, you know, it, it, it moves us up in the algorithm, which only means that more people get to watch this content and more people get to benefit from it. Okay. So if you could take that moment, just, just real quick, appreciate you. Thank you. <clears throat> so as I say, today is a special edition of the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel. And, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read a, a little passage. Now, a little background on this. Okay. Every Wednesday night, I host a meditation group, okay? Now, <clears throat> we call it the mindfulness meeting because my my partner in this uh, this group that we do, um, he's more of the Buddhist guy, right? And I'm more of the science guy, right? So we made my thing the mindfulness meeting. Like, it's not about Buddhism. It's just about the technique of, of meditation and how the technique of meditation and how the practice of meditation can really, really change everything for us, right? And so you should come to this Wednesday meeting. You, I mean you, right? You, there, sitting there. <laughs> it's, it's really wonderful. I have people who have only come to these meetings, right? I mean, maybe we've done one or two coaching sessions across the couple of years, but, but really it's just coming to these meetings, doing the meditation. Then after the meditation, we have like a 15-minute, you know, chat about, you know, concepts of mindfulness and stuff like that. But I have people who've only done this <laughs> and they have told me that, that, you know, I mean, the, the the way they talk about how I have changed things for them, and I don't take the credit, but the way they talk about that, it's truly astounding, right? Like life-changing stuff here. So you should really check it out. I'll put a link in the description <clears throat> so you can join the group and show up. It's completely free every Wednesday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, okay? Which is 6 p.m. on the West Coast, 8 p.m. in the Central Time Zone, and 9 p.m. on the East Coast. All right. Um, so at the end of every one of these mindfulness meetings, right? <clears throat> what we do is again do about a 40 minute meditation, and then we do, um, and it's all a guided meditation. It's very, very easy to do a 40 minute guided meditation. It's not like you have to just sit there and do your solo meditation for 40 minutes. That's a lot, right? But this is so easy. Um, and then after the 45 minute meditation, as I said, we do a little chat, talk about, you know, I open it up for questions and comments and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> And then we close with a reading, okay? And this was, again, this was a, a tradition started by my partner in this work. The, the group on, on, on Meetup is called Learning to Surf, right? And that's, that's borrowing from a John Kabat-Zinn quote, which says, as I, I think I just mentioned it yesterday in yesterday's episode, um, we can't stop the waves, but we can learn how to surf, which is to say we can't control what life throws at us, right? We have no control over that. But what we can control, what we can learn to do is to 
manage our response to those things. And that's what this work is all about. Okay. So <clears throat> my, my friend and, and dear colleague, Adam Asdell, uh, started this tradition where we close out the meeting with a reading. Okay. And so he would read mostly from, um, Pema Chodron, right? Which is a, a, a Buddhist teacher. Um, but I personally, I have this little book on my desk. It's called the pocket Thich Nhat Hanh. Okay. Thich Nhat Hanh was the first, like, I read a book called <clears throat> Being Peace, which is up here somewhere. Um, <clears throat> that was my first, you know, entree into this work. And that book changed my life, <laughs> all right? So I've been a, a lifelong uh, uh, fan of Thich Nhat Hanh since then. Now he's, of course, passed and, you know, hold his, uh, you know, hold, hold the, the gratitude that we got to be alive at the same time as him, you know, like like him and Jerry Garcia. I mean, come on. I mean, what do I have to complain about? I was alive across millions of years of human evolution. I got to live in the time of Jerry Garcia and Thich Nhat Hanh, right? So come on. How Who's happier than me, right? <laughs> anyway, um, this Pocket Thich Nhat Hanh is just such a beautiful book. I really, really recommend you pick up a copy of it or any Thich Nhat Hanh, really. It's, it's all just brilliant stuff. But what we do is at the end of every meeting, I allow somebody, so the, pay, the book starts on page three and ends on page 215. So I just ask somebody to call out a number. And, and what we do is we turn to that page and then whatever, you know, the next, you know, if the chapter starts on the next page or the previous page, whatever, I come to the, the nearest chapter heading and we read that chapter. And it is astounding how much it applies to whatever we talked about and whatever I did in my meditation. It's eerie. It really is. Like Carl Jung would have a, a, a field day with the synchronicity of this, right? Um, so last night, somebody called out one of my favorite numbers in the world, which is 111, okay? I see 111 all the time. Like I see it on clocks. I see it in uh, uh, license plates, on addresses, on all the time, <clears throat> And so one of our regulars, um, you know, mentioned uh, or called out the number 111 last night. So 111 is, is actually the start of a new chapter, but it's actually also the start of a new, um, a new sort of section of the book, right? The book has, I think, about, you know, four or five sections. This is section number three um, called Emotions and Relationships, okay? And so this chapter is called The Wounded Child Inside, and I'm going to read... Um, from this wonderful book, uh, from this wonderful chapter, because, you know, last night we did this and it just really all of us, I think we were all just in awe about the words in this chapter. So I wanted to share them with you here today on the podcast. All right. So that's the special edition that we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> the wounded child inside. In each of us, there is a young suffering child we have all had times of difficulty as children, and many of us have experienced trauma. To protect and defend ourselves against future suffering, we often try to forget those painful times. Every time we're in touch with the experience of suffering, we believe we can't bear it, and we stuff our feelings and memories deep down in our unconscious mind. It may be that we haven't dared to face this child for many decades. But just because we have ignored the child doesn't mean she or he isn't there. The wounded child <clears throat> is always there, trying to get our attention. The child says, I'm here, I'm here, you can't avoid me, you can't run away from me. We want to end our suffering by sending the child to a deep place inside and staying as far away as possible. But running away doesn't end our suffering, it only prolongs it. When we become aware that we've forgotten the wounded child in ourselves, we feel great compassion for that child and we begin to generate the energy of mindfulness. The practices of mindful walking, mindful sitting, and mindful breathing are our foundation. With our mindful breath and mindful steps, we can produce the energy of mindfulness and return to the awakened wisdom lying in each cell of our body. The energy will embrace us and heal us and will heal the wounded child in us. The first function of mindfulness is to recognize and not to fight. We can stop at any time and become aware of the child within us. Then when we recognize the wounded child for the first time, all we need to do is to be aware of him or her and say hello. <clears throat> That's all. 
Perhaps this child is sad. If we notice this, we can just breathe in and say to ourselves, breathing in, I know that sorrow has manifested in me. Hello, my sorrow. Breathing out, I will take good care of you. Once we have recognized our inner child, the second function of mindfulness is to embrace him or her. This is a very pleasant practice. Instead of fighting our emotions, we are taking good care of ourselves. Mindfulness brings with her an ally, concentration. The first few minutes of recognizing and embracing our inner child with tenderness will bring some relief. The difficult emotions will still be there, but we won't suffer as much anymore. After recognizing and embracing our inner child, the third function of mindfulness is to soothe and relieve our difficult emotions. Just by holding this child gently, we are soothing our difficult emotions and we can begin to feel at ease. When we embrace our strong emotions with mindfulness and concentration, we'll be able to see the roots of these mental formations. We'll know where our suffering has come from. When we see the roots of things, our suffering will lessen. So mindfulness recognizes, embraces, and relieves. The energy of mindfulness contains the energy of concentration as well as the energy of insight. Concentration helps us focus on just one thing. With concentration, the energy of looking becomes more powerful and insight is possible. Insight always has the power of liberating us. If mindfulness is there and we know how to keep mindfulness alive, concentration will be there too. And if we know how to keep concentration alive, insight will also come. The energy of mindfulness, the energy of mindfulness enables us to look deeply and gain the insight we need so that transformation is possible. I'm just going to read that last sentence again. The energy of mindfulness enables us to look deeply and gain the insight we need so that transformation is possible. If you have any questions, hit me up, okay? I wish you well. I hope you enjoyed today's reading. And I, I really would love to see all of you in our meeting on, on Wednesdays. It is completely free, okay? And it is really, really wonderful. And if you like this, you're really going to like our group. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day and I wish you well. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.